This black says it all. <clears throat> Let's put him back over here. Put it back there, Mr. Fox. Mrs. Fox, I won't ginger judge. I won't ginger judge. Or assume, I guess, I should say. I'm gonna take these off for a minute because they're hurting my nose. Can you see? Probably not. Actually, I'm going to put them back on because I can't see shit. <clears throat> I'm just going to deal with it. So. Let's talk about something that has been bothering me for a minute. Okay. Maybe this will help somebody if they happen upon my videos. And decide to actually uh, stay and listen through my entire ramblings. Which, if you don't, I don't blame you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not that mm, entertaining of a person all the time. I have moments where I'm... I act like a freaking moron. And don't know what I'm doing. And that's because I'm a freaking moron and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not acting. I'm not playing. That's, 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 that's the day for me. And then at the days, I make videos where I'm in the middle of a panic attack or a... Uh, anxiety episode or depressive mood swing <clears throat> and then I do videos like today where I was kind of just just chit chatting but uh I kind of want to talk about the military life just a little bit as a wife on the on the wife's on the wife's perspective not saying that the uh the soldier or the marine or the sailor or you know whatever your title is doesn't go through the same things this is just what me personally as a spouse have found throughout my nearly 10 years of being a well nearly eight years we'll say eight it'll be 10 by the time he's out of the military this go around or either goes to re-enlist so, almost eight years. <clears throat> but, uh, this is my experience so far. This is, these are the things that, um, that, that bug me and that really make it hard some days. I'm not saying that I'm going to leave my husband or anything like that. I'm not saying that if he, uh, decides to re-enlist rather than, uh, get out that I'm gonna pack my shit and go that is not what this video is that is not what I'm saying in the least this is just how this life takes its toll in some aspects of my life I guess I guess we'll start with the the travel the travel is awesome the travel is good it's fun it's happy but then there's also being miles oh, can we not don't don't do it sorry my cat is knocking laundry and everything else off the back of the couch that I just folded <laughs> but um the travel can be nice it can be fun seeing new places and being in new areas and you know getting out and seeing a little bit of the world but it's also being away from your family and, and, and in some cases like my family lives in Tennessee and I was uh, lucky enough to live in the same household <clears throat> my entire life my dad still lives in the house that we grew up in and I had never moved I've went I had went to the same schools my whole life I grew up with the same people my entire life and I got married at 18 and moved to California and not the luxurious California that you see on TV shows I moved to the desert of California in Twain Palms <clears throat> do not I'll get it later <laughs> but um you can look it up. It's like literally just a strip of road and that's the town. 
which I mean, I'm perfectly fine with small towns because that's that's what I grew up in was a small town with nothing to do any closer than like 30 minutes. So we lived out in the sticks. We lived in a small town. Once you got to town from said sticks. So I was perfectly fine with that bit. The 2,000 miles or 1,988 miles in between me and uh, my family that I had lived with and only known all of that for the last 18, 19 years of my life, <clears throat> that was rough. And while I was in California, I hated every minute of it. <clears throat> but since uh, we've moved back and we've left after having moved there and established ourselves because me and my husband had never been out on our own we were completely kicked out into the world on our own because we were so far away we couldn't ask for anybody for help and me and my husband are the type of people who won't ask anyone for help so uh, that aspect of it was lonely being pulled away from your family, being away from the ones that you love and everything that you know, and not being, not having the resources or the ability, because the military can't just get up and go whenever they want. They have to have permission. They have to have written permission that is signed by three or four higher ups <clears throat> going up the chain of command before a leave period is uh, is 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 either approved or denied. <clears throat> And then you are able, you have to go through and you have to check out of your unit of multiple things before you can actually leave the base to go to where you're wanting to go. And then after that you have to be back by a certain time and a certain day and checked in or you are in big, big trouble. Deep, deep shit, alright? So we got to see our family once a year for two weeks because my husband would save all of his leave that he got. They get 30 days from from January 1st to December 31st. If you do not use any of your days, you get two and a half days, I believe, unless they've changed it since the last time I actually paid attention. Uh, they get two and a half days a month, which equals to 30 days of leave that they can take a year. We would literally not use any leave until Christmas and we would take three weeks <clears throat> so that we would have a week of travel time because we drove from California to Tennessee each time we would use a week for travel time and the other two weeks were scram used to scramble around and try to visit everybody we could while we were in for the two weeks it was very hectic it was always hard leaving but it was always a relief to get back because we had established ourselves. That was our home <clears throat> at that point. We looked forward to the day when we could move back to Tennessee and be close to everybody, but that was our home. And whenever we moved from there, it was sad. I, I'm not sure if that'll be the same for this place, but I'm in the same boat as I was with California for this place. I, <clears throat> I don't like it here. Whenever I moved to California, I I liked it there. I just didn't like the distance. So there was a love-hate relationship with that. But this place, it's a love-hate relationship. We have a nice place. Uh, we're in a nice neighborhood. Um, town is not nice. But... <clears throat> and then... I feel like it'll be the same thing. When we leave here, it'll be sad. We'll miss it. But while we're here, we will take it for granted and we won't like it at all. But that's just how it goes because you have so many homes and you're there long enough just to get attached and you don't realize how attached you actually are until you go to leave. And uh, saying that, let's go on to the next topic. That, inc that includes people. When you're in the military, <coughs> you will meet a lot of people. But you will either, either not want to make relationships with said people or you'll go ahead and become good friends and have your heart ripped out whenever either they PCS or you do. Because eventually, everybody leaves. There is not an established community or neighborhood 
in military towns or on military posts. The people you meet may be here for the rest of your enlistment, the rest of your time here, or they may move in a month or two weeks. <clears throat> and sometimes it doesn't take that long to get really close to someone. So you will have friendships that you find that you will either hold on to but not get close enough to where it hurts when they leave or you will get way too close and it'll hurt like hell whenever you have to say goodbye because it takes a lot because for some reason the military seems to collect the shittiest of shit bags but when you meet good people they are truly good people and you want to hold on to them and you know you can't. Thinking about it hurts my heart because I have a couple good people now that I just don't ever want to say goodbye to, but I know that once I do, I probably won't see them ever again. We'll be those long distance Facebook friends that like each other's posts and say hey every now and then. And that's going to be it. We will go from seeing each other every single day to being long distance Facebook friends who rarely talk or acknowledge each other's existence. It's sad to say, but that's how it is. Very rarely do you have <clears throat> friendships come out of the military life with everybody moving and doing and moving on with their lives that actually last and become sustainable. Also, if you have children, it brings extra worry because you don't you want to have an established life for them you want to have a place where they can call home and you want them to be around their family and you want them to be stable and in a household and in a school where they don't have to leave all the time but in the military life that is unattainable you if you have children during the military life or military enlistment you are bound to move <clears throat> at least once because if you have children while you're in the military and you get out instead of re-enlisting you are going to move from where you are posted to where you wish to live that is at least one move from let's let's say my instance California to Tennessee that's how it was for my son that's how it's going to be for my son and my uh, two-year-old now we're going to move from Georgia probably back to Tennessee or possibly Arizona depending on how that works but we're hoping for Tennessee but it's just it's awesome it's fun but it's also so hard and I hope that anybody who is thinking about getting into it really really thinks hard and long about it before they do it because it takes a lot of dedication as a spouse as a military member it takes a lot of dedication a lot of sacrifice to what is the norm of life <clears throat> and also if you are a new spouse or military member or just someone who's having like me and having kind of a hard time dealing with it that's okay it's okay to feel like that because at this point you you know what's you know what's ahead of you and I hope that you are able to make it through with your significant other or just on your own I hope that you are able to make it through because it is worth it 100 percent but if you are unable to that is also okay don't feel guilty about it but that's just some things I'd like to bring up and some things that were kind of bugging me a little bit because I had a friend recently who was, uh, they're, they're leaving. And we became really close really quick and we've not been friends very long, but it feels like forever. And it's tugging at me a little bit. <laughs> so I figured I'd come on here and just do a little PSA. But thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.